Hey everyone, welcome back to The Silver Lining here on YouTube, or welcome if you're new here. I'm Sarah and today I am excited to be back and joining in on the collab with some other content creators here on YouTube. And this collab is called 10 Minutes Better. It happens the first Friday of each month and it is hosted by the lovely Melinda from Melinda Plain and Simple. If you're familiar with Melinda, you know she's very creative. And so each month we are given a theme and this month in July, the theme is soul searching. So that can be interpreted any number of ways. For me, July actually marks a new year <laughs> for two reasons. One, in my Jordan Essentials business, July is the beginning of the new fiscal year. And two, I actually use an academic planner and July starts a new planner for me. So I've kind of been on the hunt and I wanna share some of my planning items with you and my planning strategies and things like that going forward. But I also wanna share a few of the pictures from our recent vacation. So soul searching for me is gonna be a little bit about internally focusing on what I have coming up in the next months and as we sort of transition out of summer and into the beginning of a new school year. Also transitioning for me personally with my Jordan Essentials business from one fiscal year to the next, which also includes a new catalog coming at the end of July. Soul searching is also gonna mean me sharing a little bit of fun in the sun that I had with my family when we went on our recent vacation. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoy. Please stick around, leave me a comment, and be sure and check out the description box for the playlist and a link to Melinda's channel before you leave. So I wanna show you what I have here, what I'm leaving behind, and what I'm moving forward with in this new fiscal year and new academic year. So this is my planner from the 22-23 year, obviously. I really like the strap to keep it closed. I just feel like it keeps everything together. If I have loose papers inside and happen to be carrying it around with me, then I don't have to worry about those papers falling out. What I have noticed with the spiral bound is that a lot of times I'll keep it all the way open or I'll keep it flipped open to one page or the other. But I wanna show you what I'm leaving behind with this particular planner and what I'm moving forward with because I am actually simplifying, believe it or not. Some of these last few weeks I've left blank because we've been so busy and a lot of times we stay more organized by using our eye calendars on our iPhones. My husband and my two older daughters and myself all have a synced calendar so any of us can add appointments or a work schedule or other things like that and each of us can see it. So not only is it a way to stay organized and keep ourselves straight, but we're also using it as a means of communication so we can kind of know where each other is at all times. So as the summer started picking up and schedules started changing, then we've really switched more to a digital format for planning. And so I haven't used the June calendar much at all. One thing that I do really like having is this monthly spread and clearly I haven't used it that much in June, but in previous months I have used it quite a bit and it really does help me to feel more organized. So that is something that I'm going to miss, but I think I'll just use like a wall calendar or our digital calendar, like I mentioned, so it still keeps me organized. It's just not gonna be in a paper format. So I'll show you that in just a minute. And then the other thing is I do like to decorate a little bit with stickers and washi tape sometimes, but I will say that the daily schedule, a lot of times I would have it real heavy, like in the beginning of the week like this, and then it would trickle off. And so I was noticing that I was really using it more for a weekly to-do list. So as I was checking things off, then the second half of the week was lighter, which is fine. But this is another reason why I switched to the planner that I'm gonna show you now. So this planner setup, first of all, I got myself a new pen. These are some of my favorite pens that was introduced to me by my friend Natasha. Her channel is around my home here on YouTube, but she is also my real life friend. And she turned me on to these 
pens because she said you have to try these if you're left-handed they don't smudge and they're erasable and if you're a lefty then you know that erasable pens are typically a huge no-no because they smear all over your hand and the paper so this pen these pens in particular this brand has a really nice eraser these have four colors and you can get a single one like this one is just a single black ink and it also has the eraser on the end so i'll link this pen and if i can find them these single color pens in my description box if you're interested in that i also got this from my friend natasha for my birthday and this is just a pencil pouch it attaches to the front of the planner. So this I think was from Erin Condren and it's just a little pouch. So it has the zipper and then it has an open pouch on the side so I can easily stick my pens in there. Because one thing that this one doesn't have is the pen loop, which I had gotten separately and stuck on this old planner before. Now I will say with these spiral bound planners, a lot of times I just stick the pen on the spiral and that works just fine. So this daily planner, I just got it off of Amazon, but I do like these little protected corners. The inside, it comes with these little sticky notes and a ruler. And then it does not have much in the beginning. Like a lot of times the planners will have a month spread and dates to remember and all that kind of stuff. And I always would just forego all of this. So this works really well for me skip all of that and then we get to this page this is a bookmark that i can move from page to page this is an undated calendar so each day i can decide whether or not to use it and put my to-do list on paper or if i'm specifically that day more so running off of memory or running off of the i calendar appointments so I'm interested to try this. This is a new type of planner for me, this daily setup. I do like that it has the meal planning. I like that it has your must do's. And I also like that it has a place for gratitude. So I'm pretty excited to give this a try. Each open page has two, pay two days. There's still a few places that I can use my washi and my stickers, but I like the color scheme. And I think it's just gonna be really simple. I'll be able to have it open to this day. This is everything I need to see. And if I need to reference anything for the month, I can check our wall calendar or my phone for the eye calendar. It doesn't even actually have any pages for notes, which is also okay because I have a separate notepad that I like to use. And then I also have this little folder back here where I keep different meals that I like to keep on hand when I'm needing to kind of just change things up because I don't know if you're like me, but once you find something that everyone likes, you kind of make that <laughs> over and over. So when I need to check in, this is a reminder of uh, meals that we like. And then that helps me to also meal plan when I'm going to the grocery store. And then I also have this page back here, which is a few home projects that I'm wanting to work on in 2023 yet. And I still haven't started on any of them, but as I do them, I wanna film them and share them here. So if that's something that you're interested in is just home improvement or home beautifying type of projects, then be sure and hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss those here on my channel. So that is the planner that I'm gonna use. I will try and keep you updated and do a check-in in a few months just so I can kind of let you know how this is going. I didn't think that my planning style could get much simpler, but here I am using an undated single page for my weekly layout, and I'm pretty excited to see how this is gonna work for me going forward. As promised before you go, I just wanna share a little bit about our summer vacation. We always take a summer vacation as a family and this year we headed north. We went, actually went across the bridge in Michigan to the Upper Peninsula. Now we didn't stay, we did come back. We stayed in Mackinac City and took the next full day and went to Mackinac Island. And I just have to tell you, if you've never been, 10 out of 10 would definitely recommend going if it's something that you've been interested in. 
I don't know if you're familiar, but Mackinac City allows no cars. It's been that way since I think the 70s. And so they actually ship in for the summer months when it's the most touristy horses. And so there's a lot of horse-drawn carriages. We actually saw a taxi that was a horse-drawn carriage and we were able to rent one and do sort of a self-guided tour throughout part of the island. Now, the place that we rented the horse and carriage gave us different routes that we could choose based on the time that we wanted to rent it for. And so we had a path that we were taking and the horses were very familiar with the particular path, but it was really cool. It was a really fun experience. The rest of the time you can rent bikes or you can walk. There's some hiking trails and it's just overall super neat. And we were there in the end of June and the weather was like between 65 and 75 degrees. And of course that cool breeze off the Great Lakes made it really amazing. We took a ferry over from Mackinac City. We went to church there, we had lunch there. And like I said, we did a few walking tours. We rented the horse and carriage and we just spent the entire day there as long as we could until the storms started blowing in and we were like, we need to get back to the mainland. <laughs> so it was super fun. And the next day we actually headed home. So we just did a one day quick tour up to Mackinac. Before that, we spent the week a little bit more south in Michigan and the weather there was fantastic as well. Thank you guys so much again for being here today. Thanks for soul searching with me and spending some time on my channel. I hope that you enjoyed your stay here. If you did, be sure and give me a thumbs up before you leave. I'd love to have you subscribe and be a part of my YouTube community here. Like I said before, be sure and check out the description box for the link to the playlist. Take some time to see what the other ladies here on YouTube are soul searching this month during 10 Minutes Better. Thanks again for being here and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.